Okay, welcome. My name is Stuart Entertal. I'm training manager for Osman Ergonomics. And today I'll be talking about the importance of biophilic design in the workplace and how it can be implemented to create a healthier, happier, and more productive environment for employers, employees. So we'll go through today. I'll just uh, do a quick introduction to myself and Osman Ergonomics for those of you who haven't, uh, aren't aware of us. Um, we'll look at what is biophilia. Um, the benefits that biophilia brings to the workplace and, and to our health and well-being, and how we can look at creating biophilic uh, spaces within the workplace. We'll also look at a little bit about plants. Now, I'm no gardener, but um, I do enjoy plants and um, and probably more of a gardener now than I was probably five years ago, uh, thanks to COVID and all that time being at home. Um, and then we look at uh, what uh, plants will add to the work environment and a suggestion on sort of what plants would be sort of ideal for um, having in a work environment. And we'll just summarise at the end. So when I'm creating the webinar, the aims that I set out for this is to get you to have an understanding of what biophilia is, because it's not just about plants. Understand the benefit benefits of a biophilic workplace and ideas for creating those biophilic workplaces as well. And then again, just looking at what plants would work best, the ones that are simple to look after. So for those of you who haven't met me before, my name is Stuart Entry. So I've been working with Osmond Ergonomics now for um, over 22 years, always in a form of training. Um, I, I joined the business to develop and create our one-to-one -one training, um, which we provide to end users who are receiving um, the equipment from us. Um, and I and needed a fresh challenge after doing that for a number of years, so I became a, um, an advanced DSC assessor, still carry out assessments today, um, and then also uh, delivering the training, um, webinars, etc., uh, as we are today. Um, so, um, and, if, and in terms of us as a business, um, if I had to uh, describe what we do in one sentence, then it'd be that we provide products and services to improve um, uh, well-being and productivity within the workplace. And we tend to focus on that outcome rather than focusing on the sale, which makes us unique within the industry. We're based near uh, Wimborne in Bournemouth, uh, near Bournemouth on the south coast here. And we're corporate members of the Chartered Institute of Ergonomics and Human Factors. We're also approved training providers for the International Institute of Risk Safety Management as well if you need to speak to any of my colleagues then we're all very knowledgeable in the topic of ergonomics um, so all of my colleagues that you would uh, speak to or maybe meet they're all uh, trained dse assessors we've all done further training um, on ergonomics looking at the widest topic of ergonomics uh, so not just um, what keyboards and mice and um, chairs are but actually looking at uh, production looking at challenges uh, for provide uh, for creating products uh, for different uh, age groups, et cetera. So uh, a really fascinating uh, course to go on. And then we're very passionate about our training, internal training. So we're not just looking at what the next shiny new product is that's coming to market. Our training tends to be a bit more holistic than that. So as you can see on the screen, we've done physio-led training to learn about the body and what's happening with the body, uh, mental health awareness, mindfulness sessions, dyslexia awareness. For myself and my colleagues who are on the road, we've done advanced driving courses as well. So our training is, is quite broad. And that's just so we can have those conversations. And if we get into a, a topic with, which we're not experts in, then we know people who we can call upon if need be. So let's move on to the topic for today. So biophilia. So first of all, we need to sort of understand what biophilia is. So biophilia um, originates from uh, the Greek words philia, which is the meaning of love. And then bio, which is the meaning of life. So you join those together and you get the meaning of love, of life or um, the living things. So that's what biophilia means. So it's not just about plants. You know, it's easy to dismiss as just the love of plants or the need to include plants in your, uh, in your office decoration, which is a good thing. It's a good thing to have and an easy thing to do. But we need to realize that it's so much more than just plants. It's essentially our link with the outdoors and incorporating natural elements that we would find outdoors into the design of buildings and environments to help improve our physical, mental, and emotional well-being. So this includes natural light, range of natural materials um, in your living or working space. Um, it's probably a better explanation of uh, biophilia. 
And it should include plants, but also organic materials such as uh, natural materials like wood, leather, bamboo. Uh, you can incorporate natural colors in, into the workplace with patterns, um, maybe on uh, floor coverings, uh, on walls that bring sort of the natural spaces into mind. Uh, views, um, looking out the window of green surroundings um, is also very good for us. Uh, it, it enables us to have that link between sort of um, us and nature. Now, it's not always possible to be able to have a nice view out of your window um, onto some green space or some natural space. But so pictures of nature are a good alternative as well that we can use. Um, if you don't have those uh, natural or those views of nature outside your office or your workplace. So the concept of uh, biophilia was first introduced well, was first introduced um, by a gentleman by the name of Eric Fromm in the 1960s. So Eric was a, a German social um, psychologist and a psychoanalyst, and he was the first one who started looking at the concept of biophilia and bring, bringing it uh, to light. But it was further developed by an American biologist uh, in the 1980s by the name of Edward O. Wilson. So he was an American biologist and naturalist. Uh, ecologist, uh, entomologist, and he's known for developing the field of sociobiology. And he's often called the father of biodiversity. And he actually suggested that it's, it's not just that we love things to do with nature, but that we're actually gene uh, genetically connected to them. So uh, we have this natural link to the outdoors. And this goes back uh, thousands of years to when we were hunter gatherers and we were outside and um, you know, in nature. So we have a natural link to that. And so another simple way of just thinking about what is biophilia is maybe um, if I was to ask you to think of a happy place. So if you were to just sit there for a minute and think of a place that is happy for you, I bet it will probably have one or more of the following. So that's either some greenery, some woodlands, maybe some mountains, a beach, or maybe the sea. And it wouldn't be your place of work. So that's just an easy uh, sort of, uh, in my mind, an easy way of just thinking about what biophilia is. It's about that sort of, you know, our link to the outdoors and nature. So what would be the benefits of biophilia or bringing biophilia into the workplace? Well, there's been lots of studies done, done over the years um, that shows that incorporating biophilic design elements into the workplace can have numerous benefits to us uh, employees, including increased productivity, improved um, creativity, reduced stress levels, improved job satisfaction, and then reduced absenteeism turnover rates. And the um, the um, article that uh, with the link on the screen, so Human Spaces reports. They reported that uh, having a biophilic workplace, you know, there was 15% uh, higher levels of well-being, 6% uh, more productive and 15% more uh, creative. So uh, there were definite benefits uh, to having a, a bio or working in a biophilic um, workplace. And then other studies have shown uh, sort of um, the other side of that. So there's reduced absenteeism, uh, redu reduction in depression, stress, anxiety, and general mental health um, issues. There's reduced fee fatigue and reduced errors when we're actually doing our work. And we're seeing more companies now are using biophilia to benefit their businesses with some of these large uh, companies, these global co companies, transforming their offices in uh, to resemble what is almost like a greenhouse. So uh, Amazon, for example, over in America, they have around 40,000 plants and a 55-foot uh, tree in one of, uh, one of their sites. Um, Microsoft at their um, uh, Redmond campus in Washington, they have outdoor areas which, have, which feature wood, uh, green spaces. They have tree houses outside. They even have hiking trails. So during your breaks, then you can get outside and you can be within nature. My first hand experience of uh, being in a biophilic um, workplace is with the World Wildlife Found Foundation. So their head office is based in Woking and they have a building which was open probably about 10 years ago, which is the Living Plant Building. So it's a working office, but it was designed with biophilia and the environment at the heart of it. So there's lots of uh, natural, uh, natural materials used, but I'll come on to that a, a li little bit later on. So we need to understand how we can create a biophilic space in our workplaces. 
because it's not just about plants. They do remain an important part of the whole scheme of things. And adding plants is the easiest and most obvious way uh, to make our workspaces greener, but it's more than that. If possible, as I mentioned, views of nature. If it's possible to have a good view outside, especially if it includes trees, green spaces, water, something like that. And we know realistically that's not possible for every office or building. But on my travels, I do tend to find these uh, retail, these office, par uh, office parks that are going up. They are now incorporating more green spaces, more trees, more uh, water uh, spaces around these offices. So when you do go outside, then you are sort of um, have a feeling of being uh, within nature. So um, but then offices are being quite creative as well in terms of using what space they do have in tele. So um so it may be uh, uh, creating small natural spaces, whether it's a roof terrace that they've create or created into sort of a green space, uh, whether it's using planted tubs outside of their building. Um, you know, there are plenty of ways in which we can sort of um, make our, our workplace, make our offices a, a little bit greener and feel a bit more sort of uh, linked to nature. And as I mentioned um, earlier on, pictures, they can be a good way or a good alternative of um, getting views of nature outside, of, outside um, bringing the outside in. So it doesn't have to be looking at um, real trees, real greenery, just by having pictures um, on the wall, then we can, um, we can sort of have that feeling, that link to nature. Um, you can even get picture frames now, which have mummified plants, uh, leaves and moss on so they are real plants or they were real plants and they've just been mummified they get put onto a picture frame so you can hang them on the walls and they come in various styles and, and sizes so you, you can even bring sort of uh, what was real life uh, plants in as you may have noticed behind me in our training room in our meeting room here we have uh, on one of the walls um, which is about five meters long uh, from floor to ceiling we have a picture of uh, woodland so that's trying to bring that biophilic um, sort of link into our meeting rooms as well. So there are lots of ways in which we can um, try and get that um, in, uh, outdoors, indoors. Incorporating natural light and ventilation, that's important for us. So whether that's just natural wind, having windows um, so you can see out of, whether it's skylights, um, light wells to, to bring light into uh, darkened areas, that's all going to be good for us because exposure to natural light has been linked with improving our mood, uh, improving our sleep, reducing levels of stress. And part of this, I think, is because light is one of the main factors that drives our circadian rhythm. So, And it's important to look after this as it's our natural body clock. So when we're um, our circadian rhythm, that helps to produce hormones in the body, depending on basically the time of the day, what we have to do. So uh, hormones like serotonin, they help to keep our brain alert. So the body starts to release that as uh, daylight starts to break in the morning. as uh, And then that sunlight helps to sort of um, keep that body clock going. When we get towards the end of the day, the sun starts to uh, drop and uh, nighttime starts, then the body starts to produce different hormones like melatonin. And that's our sleep hormone. So that helps us to sort of relax, to wind down and to um, be able to sleep um, adequately and get a good night's sleep. So all of this is influenced by light. So we can have good daylight uh, coming in and be sort of exposed to it, then that's just going to help our natural body clock to sort of keep in sync and keep in time. Because I know uh, from experiences and from um, if you listen to our sleep webinar, then, you know, getting a good night's sleep is crucial to having a productive and a, a healthy sort of waking day. We also need to be aware of fresh air and having and the lack of fresh air. So if we don't have enough fresh air, then that can make, make us feel tired. It makes us feel drowsy. So then uh, pro uh, productivity drops, um, errors or mistakes start to, to increase. So, the, so being able to access fresh air is crucial as well, just to keep our brain alert. And again, there are plenty of sort of simple ways or simple devices out there on the market that you can put into an office place that will monitor oxygen levels. So it will tell you whether um, the oxygen is being um, depleted in, in the room, especially for those of us who maybe work at home in a, in a spare room or something, 
during the winter times, I think it's uh, we're more susceptible to having the windows closed and not having so much fresh air. But in the um, in the summertime, when we can have windows open at home, then that's better. But there are ways in which we can monitor oxygen levels within um, the, the rooms that we're in. Using natural materials such as wood, stone, bamboo, leather, for example. You know, I touched on that. It's not just about the plants. It's about natural materials. So we, we can incorporate those natural materials into the furnishings, into our environment. Then that's going to um, help to create or further enhance that biophilic workplace. So natural materials to us as humans, they generally provide a sense of warmth and comfort and can help, again, reduce those levels of stress and anxiety. And going back to the World Wildlife Foundation, their building, they use the uh, wood as the major part of their framework, the structure to their building, and it's all exposed. So when you're inside or outside, then you can see the timber, you can see the wood. So um, <clears throat> so you, you feel connected to that. We could use um, water features such as fountains, aquariums, water walls. Uh, they can all be used to, in, uh, to incorporate that sort of biophilic workplace. As I say, most of the fountains, water spaces tend to be outside of the buildings that I've seen. I have seen a number of aquariums within buildings, um, but water I find does tend to be sort of more outside than in. And that sound and sort of the movement the water um, provides can have that calming effect. And again, just helps reduce that stress and anxiety levels. We could use organic shapes. So there's um, carpet flooring manufacturers that are using patterns within their uh, carpets to sort of remind us um, of the nature and, and the outdoors and also using sort of natural colours uh, that will sort of um, invoke that link to nature and remind us of natural spaces. You could always, um, there's wall coverings that have, um, or decorations that can um, create sort of patterns that make uh, remind us of the outdoors. And again, with acoustic pads, um, see lots of pa acoustic pads that can be designed into the shape of pretty much whatever you want. So uh, frequently cloud shapes are hung from ceilings. So again, it's just creating that sort of, that, uh, that feeling of that link. We could use sound. So uh, um, sound can be incorporated into the workplace uh, just to create that sort of uh, feeling as though we're in nature. Again, going back to the World Wildlife, Wildlife Foundation, um, in their main atrium, which is a shared sort of breakout area, soft seating, there's lots of plants. I think there's three trees in there. Um, but they have birdsong playing quietly in the background. So you can just hear uh, the, the noise of birds. So it actually sort of makes you feel as though you're more immersed uh, within the forest, within that natural space. So again, birdsong or just some noise, you know, uh, noises of nature in the background can be very therapeutic and sort of, again, help to reduce those levels of stress or anxiety. And then, as we said, finally, the, the most uh, easiest and the cheapest thing you can do is to add plants into the workplace. And that can include potted plants. So if you're working at home, uh, spare room, just having a small potted plant on your desk can uh, make a, a big difference. Um, we could have living walls. So uh, in reception areas of buildings, I've seen living walls where the, um, the wall is literally um, planted with plants and, and um that helps to sort of bring that um, that green space in, into the work. Uh, there is um, lots of manufacturers who are, are creating different ways in which we can sort of display um, plants around the office. So, and also having those potted plants or just having plants in the um, in the workplace has been shown to improve air quality as well. Um, so it's a, a double whammy with plants. <clears throat> So we move on to plant because that is the easiest way in which we can sort of incorporate uh, nature into our working in, in, in um, environment. Then, you know, plants, are, I think there's about, you know, over 200,000 identified plant species that are central to life on Earth. So uh, plants are very important. We hear a lot on the news and on social media about how we need to um, create sort of um, wild spaces for uh, nature to be able to um, 
to, to survive. So for bees, for example, uh, planting the wild seeds out there so that they um, have something to um, to uh, feed on, I suppose. Um, but so all around, plants are, are central. Uh, and they and the way in which they sort of help the planet and help us is that they have a process which they go through, which is photosynthesis. So this is a process by which plants uh, use sunlight, they use water and carbon dioxide to create oxygen and energy, which is in the form of sugar. So they clean the air by absorbing those chemicals. So in the workplace, inside, um, we they will start to sort of uh, take away those um, like VOCs, the volatile organic compounds. They'll take those out of the air, they'll absorb them, and they will disperse that um, into the soil. And then that becomes then a food for the plants. So plants are quite clever uh, things, considering they look so simple. But they also provide food for us. Uh, so they provide seeds, wheat, glucose. And actually something while I was researching this that came as a surprise, 90% of the food humans eat come from about 30 plants. So out of those 200,000 identified plant species, all we uh, most food that we eat will come from 30 plants. So that's quite surprising. But plants have also been used uh, for um, medicine. So uh, medicinal um, herbs have been used for thousands of years. And today, around 11% of the drugs considered as basic or essential by the World Health Organization originate in flowering plants. So to give some examples on that, aloe vera, we can use that on burns. Um, aspirin, the active ingredient in aspirin is uh, ciliaric uh, acid, which is a plant hormone. Uh, we get morphine from opium plants or poppy plants. So plants have been um, helping us survive and looking after the planet for, for thousands, uh, millions of years. So they are an important part of the ecological system and our well-being. So the average person will probably spend about 90% of their time living, uh, spending their lives indoors, which comes as quite a shock to me when, when I was researching this. Um, and it's a long proportion of our lives to sort of be spent indoors. So that's probably why we sort of crave that link, uh, maybe not consciously, but our minds sort of crave that link to being uh, with the outdoors. Indoors, there tends to be anywhere between two to five times more pollution indoors than outdoors. So we have the, the pollution that's just around us outdoors that comes in. But we can also add to the internal environment, we can add dust, we can add dirt, uh, we can add those uh, volatile organic compounds, which is used in the manufacturing of chairs, furniture, and a lot of stuff that's within our working environments. We also have the carbon dioxide that is produced by us um, in these buildings. And then we also have viruses, uh, which can be spread through internal in, in, in closed spaces. So we, we so we're, we're thinking that maybe being indoors, we are safer now air conditioning within the larger buildings. They obviously filter out some of these uh, pollutants from the indoors. But generally, if we don't have access to air conditioning, then, you know, the um, pollutants indoors are going to be greater than outdoors. So, so when we look at plants, what do they add to this environment? Well, pretty much what I've touched on sort of a minute ago. So they will generally improve the well-being of ourselves and, and our colleagues. So they improve that well, uh, that air quality by removing chemicals and producing oxygen. Now, a lot of these, uh, this research in terms of how much uh, pollutants or chemicals that um, plants draw out of the air is um, a little bit um, un unsure because a lot of these tests have been done in lab environments. So in the real world, things are slightly different. So maybe the results of some of those tests are maybe a bit um you know, um, the the um, the amount of uh, chemicals and uh, viruses uh, or sorry, uh, pollutants they take out there may not be as great in, in the real world as they would be in a lab environment. But they do nevertheless help to sort of um, take those chemicals out. They help to reduce uh, sickness because we end up feeling better within ourselves. And there were times in, in the past where we've talked about sick syndrome buildings. Um, so maybe that is something to do with the lack of uh, plants or link to nature and 
um, the buildings are just concrete gray and you know they they just don't make us feel happy so we end up um, losing that well-being uh, they help to reduce stress so looking at plants is you know it's, it's therapeutic uh, just to be able to glance and, and look at a plant for a few seconds it just helps um, and if we are less stressed, we're less anxious, and that allows us to sort of focus on what we need to get done during the day. So it increases our productivity. Um, it improves our levels of concentration. It reduces errors in our work. And it helps to make us more creative because when we're happier, when we're relaxed, we do tend to be more creative. Uh, we don't tend to get those mental blocks. They, plants, having them scattered around, can make the workplace look more attractive. And so there are various different ways in which we can sort of um, display plants. Uh, in reception areas, they create a nice welcoming um, area for uh, visitors or for staff. I went to a company in the Southwest not so long ago, and in their reception area, it's a large glass atrium uh, with lots of plants, lots of tall plants as well to sort of give that height depth and, you know, that feeling of sort of almost entering into a, a forest area. But they also had a tree house um, in there um, kind of above the reception area, which they use as a meeting room for about 12 or 15 people, I think. So you walk in there and you have this um, instant feeling of being sort of almost indoors when, when you walk in there. Plants can also help to absorb noise. They can work as a, a barrier to sort of stop noise uh, traveling so much, especially if you're in a, a workplace which has a lot of hard surfaces. Um, and um, they can also be used to zone spaces in offices. So rather than having, um, you know, solid dividers to sort of split open plan areas, um, you can be creative with the plant. So as I touched on earlier, there's a lot of uh, furniture manufacturers who can offer planters um, where they're either fixed or they can be on wheels, so they're mobile, that you can plant up with um, plants. Uh, there's shelving units, which can act as room dividers and uh, which you can add plants into. Uh, there are units that can go on top of cupboards um, to display plants. So there's lots of different ways in which you can uh, now display plants. You don't need to have to sort of have a dedicated floor space to be able to do that. Uh, as an example, uh, home where, where I live, then what we've done at home is we've actually used hanging baskets and hanging plants in our lounge diner. So uh, between where we sit to have our dining, um, our dinners, and where we sit in the evening to watch the TV, then what, what we've done is we've hung uh, probably about half a dozen um, plants from the ceiling that cover sort of half the uh, width of the room. And these are hanging plants, so they've got um, long trailing leaves on them, and it actually just creates a green wall. And, um, you know, it's something that I actually love. And when I come home at, uh, of, of a day's work and I walk in there, then actually, yes, I do feel, you know, it just perks me up a bit. So, so there are lots of ways in which we can sort of display uh, plants and use, use them effectively. So it's, you know, I, I remember a few years ago when people talk about plants as much as I love them, I didn't know how to look after them um, properly. I would either, um, they would either die through uh, underwatering or I'd end up overwatering. So um, confidence levels with plants weren't that great until I started to realize that actually there's some plants out there that are easier to look after than others. So by focusing on those plants, then um, you know, it's going to make the whole life easier just keeping them alive and keeping them green. So some of the things we need to consider when we're looking at lights is how much light does the plant lead, need? Will it survive in a dimly lit area or will it uh, will it be better suited in an area that's flooded by natural sunlight? Um, so we need to be aware of sort of where we're going to position those plants uh, for that natural light. And then do you have space for for, for the plants? As I mentioned a minute ago, you don't need huge amounts of space. And there's some very clever ideas for enabling plants to be incorporated without taking up too much floor space. We need to, uh, well, depending on the size of the business, you you or the office floor, you may you will need to nominate someone who is going to look after those plants, uh, take care of them. Um, 
but you know again to sort of help with the management of plants you can get water feeders so they're effectively bottles that you turn upside down you can fill them with water and they will slowly drip water into the soil which will help to uh, keep the soil nice and moist and keep the plants alive so we don't have to be looking after them sort of um, watering them every couple of days but if maybe you haven't got the uh, the facilities or the ability to be able to do that, maybe there's no one in, in the workplace in your company who um, has green fingers, then there are companies out there who will um, be out where you can rent plants. Um, so you can rent the plants on a monthly or yearly contract. And then combined with that, what they will do is they will do the maintenance as well. So they'll come in periodically to make sure the plants are healthy. They will remove any plants that aren't so healthy and, and replace them. And also maybe replace the plants just for a fresh enough, for a change. So having different plants in, in the workplace. So, um, you know, there are companies out there to hold your hand and they will also be able to advise on the most suitable plants for the environments that you are wishing to put them in. So uh, to get the best out of them. And then finally, you know, can the plants be seen by employees once they are actually in place? Because there's no point in having uh, maybe some plants that are in floor planters. They are hidden behind a cupboard or something. And uh, when you're sat there at your desk, you can't actually see them. So can we see these plants? Because we need to be actually um, able to see them nice and easily so we can feel that link with them. So as I mentioned, I'm not a gardener, but I do enjoy the plants. Uh, and over the years, some of the plants that I found that are easiest to look after, you know, are on screen here. So they don't tend to need huge amounts of light. They don't tend to need huge amounts of water. And some of them that, you know, they look different to each other. They look very attractive as well. So we take the peace lily. Um, that's a nice dark green plant. <clears throat> um, can be a nice small plant um, for on your desk, or they can be grown so they're quite large. So they could go in a, a, a floor planter. And they produce uh, nice white flowers um, during the year as well. So give you something nice to look at. We have the Dracania, which almost looks like a miniature tree. But they can be sort of kept quite small as well. Probably not small enough to go on a desk, um, but small enough to sort of be in a floor planter or maybe get um, they grow big enough so that they could all, almost resemble sort of uh, small trees. So and they're quite easy to look after. They don't need huge amounts of water and they don't need huge amounts of light either. We have the sp uh, spider plants. So that's one of my favorites because that is so easy to look after. And it's great for hanging from a from a floor, uh, from a ceiling space, especially when you have the trails of baby plant, uh, sp baby spider plants. So again, doesn't need huge amounts of water, doesn't need huge amounts of uh, natural light as well. We have a snake plant. Um, so that just grows um, nice and tall. Uh, they can be quite short or we can have them uh, quite big as well. So uh, works in uh, different uh, surfaces. And then we have um, a couple of plants that sort of aren't um, images on there, but the uh, philandrodon. Um, so that's a, like it almost looks similar to an ivy, but you can train this around a post um, and so you can get some height with it. So you can get it to sort of trail across shelves, maybe. Um, so you can actually sort of um, get it to, to cover uh, some spaces. And again, with uh, Devil's Ivy. Uh, similar that will trail as well so you could put that on a, a, high, a higher surface have it trailing down or maybe you can train it to uh, go across some shelves or across some furniture or something like that so these uh, plants I would say tend to be uh, the easiest ones that I've discovered to look after they um, have good absorbency of um, those uh, pollutants in the air and and the, and they they don't need huge amounts of light so these are, are good plants to be able to sort of uh, think about and look at okay so so just to summarize what, what i've gone through um over the last sort of uh, half an hour 35 minutes is that biophilia isn't just about plants it's about our natural um our link with with nature and the outdoors so incorporate, uh, incorporating biophilic design elements into our workplace can help to create that healthier, happier and more uh, productive environment for employees. And by incorporating natural light, greenery, natural materials, water features, uh, employers can, um, can create a space that promotes well-being and productivity. And it will um, 
reduced absences and um, you know uh, staff sickness within that. And you know, as a starting point, adding plants is by far the easiest way to sort of start that journey of making your workplace uh, generally greener. Um, and if you can't, uh, you know, if you can't make your workspace biophilic just because of maybe the nature of the activities you do within that workplace, then what I would say is try and get out into nature regularly, um, not just at the weekend, but if possible, do it during, regularly during the day. So all those times as an assessor, when I tell people that they should be taking their lunch away from the desk, they should be getting up away from their desk and going for short walks and getting those um, that movement regularly during the day then why not go outside, especially now um, in the uh, warmer weather, the sunnier weather, you know, go for a walk, just sit outside. There are lots of green spaces normally near us. Uh, so it doesn't have to be huge, just a couple of trees some plants, a, a bit of grass, that will be enough just to sort of help to uh, improve our mindset and, and, uh, in, and feel that link with nature. So I had some aims at the uh, start of uh, the webinar, and hopefully I've met those for you. So the aims were to have an understanding of what biophilia is. So hopefully I've covered that adequately. Understand the benefits of a uh, biophilic workplace and the advantages it can bring to um, the, work, the health and well-being of staff and the productivity to the organization. Some ideas for creating a biophilic workplace. So just some other things to think about. Um, rather than just plants and how we can look at uh, incorporating that in, whether that's uh, through the use of uh, furniture, um, having those natural, uh, the furniture made out of natural materials, or whether it's um, looking at sort of uh, pictures or other ways in which we can do that. And hopefully I've given you an idea on sort of a starting point in terms of what types of plants would work well and would be sort of relatively easy to look after within the workplace. So I mentioned also at the start that we have some free resources. So we have one web, web page at osmondgroup.co.uk where you can access all of our resources. So that's our uh, online e-catalogue, e, e so our website. Uh, we've got plenty of resources online about posture, about um, agile working, so they can be accessed there and are free to use. Uh, our training and events page, our monthly bulletin, back issues can be um located through the web link and you can also subscribe to um, the bulletins and the blogs um, if you don't already receive them and then also our links to social media so you can find me on linkedin you can find um, uh, osmond ergonomics on linkedin facebook so um, we all always put in our information that we think is going to be help, uh, helpful and useful uh, to our followers uh, around the topics of ergonomics well-being health and safety etc and last year, we also started um, a library, uh, creating a library of top tips videos. So these are short 60 to 90 second videos, just answering simple questions that we commonly get asked. So why should I use a vertical mouse over a standard mouse? Why do I need a footrest? What height should I have and distance should I have my monitor? So just simple questions. So you can see that um, library of videos there and we're constantly adding to them as well. If you've missed any of our other webinars, you can access those uh, recordings through the resource section of our website at ergonomics.co.uk. And if you have it, if you'd like to discuss any aspects of uh, today's webinar, um, or you want to sort of uh, discuss ideas on how you can implement it, uh, then please do uh, get in contact. My email address and phone number on the screen now. Um, our customer service team are more than happy to answer any questions you have as well. So their contact details are at the bottom of the screen. So now we've just got some time for questions uh, just to see if anything's come through.